Govelin was the very first ever firing grass type. No one ever uses it though because it's incredibly mid stat wise. But it can get up to some good nonsense using its chlorophyll ability which at least makes it speedy in the sun, and it's also got a new signature move called Spicy Extract that boosts the target's attack by 2 stages and drops their defense by 2. We give him the mirror herb to copy these stat changes and all of a sudden we're actually pretty spicy over here. It's got a unique dual stab with Temper Flare, along with Seed Bomb and Stomping Tantrum for coverage, and Scovillain can actually be a pretty slept on Sunsweeper while looking like a middle stage evolution. Look, sometimes all you need is three things, two bell peppers and some sun. Scovillain is a very overlooked Pokemon and for good reason. It really feels like it's a middle evolution and it just doesn't evolve again. But this thing definitely still has some fun shenanigans it can do. And if you're into that kind of thing, definitely consider hitting that subscribe button. My goal is to hit 400k and I'd love for you to be part of the journey. And in today's match, we've got a super interesting one because they are semi-sun based as well. And it's going to be, it's going to be sunny out here. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. So my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Milotic and keeping the theme of the bulky water types. I'm going to lead off with the Swampert. I kind of was expecting the Torkoal lead as I have a great matchup against that thing. However, at this point, I'm just going to go for the Stealth Rock here. And while they do have the potential with that rapid spin on the Torkoal, this is mostly fine. They're actually just gonna go right into the Torkoal, which is kind of the matchup I was looking for anyway. And this thing is gonna do a little bit of work for us and for them. It sets up the Drought, and while that does enable their Venusaur, it also sets up my Sun Sweepers as well. So again, get your SPS 50 on because it is sunny up in this bitch and it's gonna be a fun one. So I decided to go for the Earthquake here, mostly just because I really need some chip on the Torkoal. Now, they could decide to go for a rapid spin or just go for some damage. Turns out they're actually gonna yawn, probably expecting me to switch out here. But again, I really just needed that earthquake chip uh, because Torkoal's bulky ass is a little bit of a problem, especially for my more offensive mons here. So at this point, I'm just gonna go for the flip turn. Uh, it's great against the Torkoal to grab some more chip, but also covers for a switch here. And I don't get put to sleep from that yawn. So they're gonna switch directly into Swampert's Arch Nemesis. The Venusaur is extremely scary, but the flip turn does allow me a matchup here. And them deciding to get the Venusaur going early is a pretty smart play because this thing is extremely threatening in the sun. And while I do have the Moltres who can take an attack or at least two Sludge Bombs, uh, I imagine they probably Terra. So rather than going for the Flamethrower in the sun, I decide to go for the Air Slash. It's going to cover for a potential Terra, uh, but also potentially a Switch. And uh, they are going to end up going ahead and turning this boy into wa freaking shooting water out of his plant. This thing is pretty insane here. So it is actually going to end up going for the growth. Of course, with that chlorophyll, it is going to be faster. And in the sun, you actually get a plus two special attack boost. And now with that Terra is going to allow them to definitely live in Air Slash. So Venusaur, extremely scary. I am frightened and I don't really have much that wants to switch into this. So, you know, Choice Scarf Moltres is not quite going to have enough speed to go for another Air Slash here as the Sludge Bomb just straight up takes care of me. So. We now have a very large frog-shaped problem in front of us. We also see the life orb. So this thing has enough damage to kill just about everything. But I do have a plan. Since the sun is up, I can actually use that to my advantage as well. And I can go into the Levani. So here's the situation. Levani is a base 92 speed, whereas Venusaur has base 80. So with the sun still up, I should be able to outspeed here and finish this thing off with a Terra Bug boosted Fell Stinger and then immediately get myself a plus three attack which is gonna make this thing able to essentially sweep through the team. Turns out, however, I am actually adamant and it, <laughs> the Venusaur is in fact a plus speed nature and that is gonna be the difference of that thing being able to outspeed me. I thought that I still outspeed still being uh, non plus speed nature. Turns out though, this thing literally has like, I think one point of speed higher than me. So that is wildly unfortunate, extreme over calculation on my end. And now I wasted my Terra. So that is gonna set me quite a bit behind, but we must rebuild. I do feel confident at least that I can come in to hit on top here, go for that priority mock punch to take care of the Venusaur, and that is at least going to take care of their scariest sweeper. So Venusaur does it cause some ruckus, as that fellow usually does, but the playing field is leveled on the fact that uh, we no longer each have a Terra. So 
They decide to go into Torkoal here, and this is a smart play because there's actually one turn of Sun left, and they actually want to ensure that their own Torkoal isn't going to enable uh, my Scovillain in the back with the with the Sun. So they go into this thing essentially as Death Fodder. I can finish it off with another Mock Punch, and then the Sunlight is going to go away. So smart play on their end, not uh, saving the Torkoal to come in and get that Drought up later, which enables me. And now looking at this mid to late game, it's going to be up to getting my Scovillain kind of enabled to set up to sweep. So they decide to bring in the Milotic here on the Revenge Switch, and this thing, while it is a defensive monster, it doesn't really threaten me offensively, especially as I can bring in the uh, the Grafaii here, who is specially defensive. Scald's not going to do a whole lot of damage here. And now it's my turn to play with the Sun Baby. I decide to go for the Sunny Day. I say, hey, if your turtle's not going to do it, I'm just going to go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. Go for the old uh, classic Sunny Day with the Heat Rock is going to allow that to stick around. And also reduce the damage from Scalds here, but I do get a burn, which doesn't really matter a whole lot. As in this situation, I'm like, alright, I need to get in Scovillain here, and I need to do it quick. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to Parting Shot on out of here, drop this thing Special Attack, and the second I click it, I was like, oh, I may have fucked up. I did, in fact, because rather than this thing being Marvel Scale, it's actually competitive. So for each stat drop that I give it... It now gets plus two in special attack. So I have found myself in quite the pickle here where I'm just out here making misplays. And literally the second I clicked that parting shot, I was like, wait, it, it turns out not all my low ticks are going to be Marvel scale. And this is bad. So uh, the good news is at least this thing still isn't super offensive. I can go into the Swampert here kind of just to scout out what this, you know, wants to do. The Swampert is useful for me in this matchup in that I can take attacks from like the Basque Legion. But other than that, this feels like a fine time to go into the Swampert because I still, I would like a position in bringing in Scoville and I'm not taking an attack. So if I have to sack this thing off, that is fine. I decide to go for the knockoff. I get a little bit of chip and actually get rid of a Mirror Herb over there. So this thing was trying to be a damn issue, but it still is relatively scary. Uh, with the special attack boost that it has, I decide I would really like this thing to kind of just finish me off here. I need all the turns of sun that I can for my Scovillain, and they're instead just going to go for a damn recover because my Lotic loves to be just as annoying as possible. As, uh, I do get an Earthquake off, and honestly, I would love still some chip on this thing, so I'm kind of fine with that here. But at this point, they are going to end up finishing me off with one more neutral Ice Beam. So... That takes care of Swampert, which is kind of fine because this just allows me an easier switch into my Scovillain here, and it's time to reveal my two favorite friends. So I can go into the Habanero here. The one on the left, he's Hob. The one on the right is, in fact, Nero. So in this situation, I do have some turns of uh, the Chlorophyll where I'm going to be able to outspeed, but also knowing that they have something like the Umbreon in the back that can defensively pretty much wall anything, I'm going to go myself for a nice little spicy extract here. They do, in fact, decide to go into the Umbreon, who a lot of the time is going to be able to take attacks, but then I'm like, hey, actually, I'm going to go ahead and spit some gross stuff on you. Boost your attack sharply. Give it a nice little plus two in attack, minus two in defense, and then Scovillain's like, hey, actually, I'm going to hang on to that. The Mirror Herb is going to come through, give me the stat changes, and now at plus two attack, paired with that thing being minus two defense, should be enough with a sun-boosted Temper Flare to be able to take care of it. And that has got to be one of the easiest ways I've ever knocked out an Umbreon and uh, didn't have to put up a crazy fight with that, which is amazing. And now we are in a position with the Scovillain to do some damage out here. We are in the sun. We are super fast. And we've got a nice little doubles attack here. So they decide to go into the Metagross. I do have one more turn left of the sun. So you already know I'm pissed off out here. Gonna go for another Temper Flare. And obviously they cannot Terra. Also no Bullet Punch to be noted. But that's gonna take care of the Metagross. And just like that we're able to uh, not only knock out a big part of their defensive core with that, uh, with that Umbreon. But also anytime you take care of a Metagross it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. So... Now they get a free switch, and the bad news is the sun goes away. I did too much damn dilly-dally in there with the Swamp and nonsense. So while the sun does go away, I realize more than ever that Scovillain is definitely my win con here. So I need to conserve this little fella, and the best way I can do that is to get my sun back up. Because the two remaining Pokemon being the Milotic along with the Basque Legion, we should be in a decent position here. So I decide to go into the Hitmontop just because I can intimidate this thing. It turns out it does not damn matter because Last Respects is OP as hell and just straight up knocks me out. 
Um, but that's still mostly fine because with the wombo combo I have of little goop over here with the skill villain I'm gonna be able to get my sunny day back up with that prankster and especially with heat rock It's gonna stay around for the remainder of the match So I bring this thing in and my normal type actually also helps me out just because they can't last respects me uh, A lot of the time these things are going to be choiced. I imagine that thing is choice banded uh, so they're forced to basically go back into the Milotic here, and I say, hold on a second, let me just go ahead and somehow summon the power of the sun as a little painter monkey guy, and that is perfect. So, I, one thing I don't want to do is obviously parting shot on this thing, because we've seen the, what happens there. And also, I can't really hard switch into this go villain here, so I just decide to go for a copycat. It's just going to get the sunny day, it doesn't matter, but again... I'm just trying to let the Grafii go down here, as uh, the Ice Beam's not going to quite do enough damage. My own special defensive bulk is ruining my damn plans over here, because I need this to go down to be able to bring in this Go Villain. Now, I also need this Milotic not to go for recovers, because with too much health and without attack boost on my Go Villain, I'm not going to have enough damage. So, I decide to Encore it into the Ice Beam, thinking, hopefully this fl uh, <laughs> Flame Recoil kills me, and it doesn't. I live it with two which is freaking annoying. But uh, again, all I need is the freaking bell peppers to come back in here and we could hopefully have the match. So uh, they're actually gonna end up switching into the Basque Legion who can now is gonna kinda chill there for a turn as of course the burn recoil is gonna knock me out next turn. I'm just gonna encore absolutely nothing which is totally fine. But again, Scovillain in the back is looking like he's about to have a field day out here because as I go down to my burn, it is soon gonna be time to be uh, getting some photosynthesizing up in this bitch. So final Pokemon, gonna be the little bell pepper dudes in a nice pair of jeans who also has the greatest shiny ever. So. At this point, of course, I'm going to be able to outspeed, and now it just comes down to damage. The Seed Bomb, I do not have my crazy spicy extract strat working for me here, but Basque Legion is going to go down to a Seed Bomb, which is absolutely amazing. And now, the final Pokemon is going to be this Milotic, who hopefully has enough chip. It looks like after Stealth Rock being below half, we are going to have enough damage with the Seed Bomb, and just go ahead and uh, throw our babies at him. That's going to take care of the Milotic, and effectively going to be the end of the game. So I thought that was a super interesting match. I definitely had some glaring misplays, but sometimes the Sko villain comes in and bails you out. So super satisfying ending there for your Sunny Boys. And uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and jump into the next game, because this Sun Team is extremely fun to use. So. In this match, we have kind of a scary matchup. They have a strong defensive core with like Corviknight, there's a Moongus, and uh, the Gastrodon, but also some sleeper picks like the Dotspun with its well-baked body ability. You can't hit it with fire moves or else it just gets a defense boost and is just immune to it. So there's great defensive synergy there in all of these walls, especially with Corviknight and Amoongus trying to dodge fire attacks, and it's definitely going to be tough to break. So we've almost got a matchup of defense versus offense here as I have strong kind of hyper offense, and let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so my dude is going to go ahead and end up leading off with the Incineroar, who is also a pretty defensive, annoying Mon, being able to switch in with Intimidate's potentials, you know, four parting shots, and uh, this thing just never dies. So, I lead off with the Swampert once again, because I do want to try to get that Stealth Rock up, and it turns out they are actually going to reveal the Fake Out. While it doesn't do a lot of damage, it also shows us that this thing is going to be Life Orbs. So now I'm thinking this thing has to be some type of uh, more offensive variant, which is kind of fine by me. So... I am going to be able to get my Stealth Rock up here, and I don't imagine this thing wants to stay in. I could opt for the flip turn and try to get a matchup, but I feel like in a game like this where there's going to be some pivoting, you know, the Stealth Rock is going to be helpful. So they decide to switch into Gastrodon, and while I do have the power of grass on my squad, they have a lot of answers and switch-ins to my kind of grass offensive options. So I get that Stealth Rock up, which is great. And at this point, I imagine Gastrodon probably sets up the Stealth Rock of its own. And uh, I kind of am just like, well, at this point, I might as well go for a knockoff. Imagine kind of get some chip, but also get rid of like a Leftovers. It turns out this thing was wearing heavy duty boots. I've never seen a slug in boots, but uh, I am able to knock those off as they do uh, set up the Stealth Rock of their own. So, of course, I can't really do a whole lot of damage to this thing with an Earthquake. It also has potential for Recovers, but this thing can't really hurt me either. So I'm like, you know what, I might as well actually just get a nice little hard switch going, and I'm going to end up going into the Hitmontop. I want to bring this thing in, first of all, just to see what it wants to do to Swampert, uh, but also I can potentially Rapid Spin away the Stealth Rock, because this team does kind of need it, you know, with the, uh, with the threats I have, especially Moltres. It's nice to have you no know, rocks on my side. So I come in, intimidate, and then this guy's like, hey, see ya. I'm way too scared. Gonna end up switching out as they bring in Amoongus. Honestly, both Gastrodon and Amoongus are so tough to break that uh, 
They're very scary, especially on the same team, as they do work well together. And Amoongus is a specific asshole to my team because while it does threaten here with a Spore, they know I have the Grass-type switch-ins to kind of block the Spore, but then also they have the potential to just go for a Sludge Bomb making that prediction. So I actually just stay in here, and I'm going to let uh, him on top go for a Sunny Day. It's going to stay up for five turns. kind of just want to see what they decide to do here. Uh, but they are just going to go for that Spore. So Hitmontop is kind of just the best answer to be put to sleep. So I'm like, that's fine. We're just dancing slower out here and uh, never hurt nobody. So being Spored, I now figure I'm like, you know what? I can't bring in Moltres because I haven't been able to rapid spin away the Stealth Rock. And a Sludge Bomb is going to de definitely hurt a lot. But then I'm like, maybe they don't Sludge Bomb here. Regardless, I'm going to go into Blossom, which uh, there's, no there's not really a good switch in here so they do in fact just go for the sludge bomb and that's just gonna straight up kill me so i do have great special defense on this thing which led me to believe maybe i was gonna be able to take one but a critical hit actually knocks me out which is annoying because it was more than likely that that sludge bomb only does like 65 percent to me so uh, a weather ball is not gonna happen from the blossom but what i do have is uh the freaking habanero who you already know is ready to cause some ruckus out here i come in i got my jeans looking fresh as ever and uh, at this point, I'm like, okay, what are their switch-ins to this? It's going to be not a whole lot because I have coverage on both Corviknight and the Gastrodon. And the one answer that makes sense to me is going to be something like the Dots Bun. So I'm thinking maybe they try to bring this in on a fire move, get that well-baked body ability. And that's exactly what happens. They're going to go into the Bread Dog, which is the most ridiculous thing ever. But I'm going to go ahead and predict that and go for that Spicy Extract. So I'm going to give them the Sharp Attack Boost and, of course, the Harsh Defense Drop. And then, yep, I'm going to go ahead and steal that. And uh, thank you very much, Mr. Sir. I am now in a position where, especially with this thing with that minus defense, uh, while these things are definitely built defensively, I should be in a spot where now Seed Bomb is going to be able to kill. And also, they really don't have a whole lot of answers to the Scoville in here. As, again, I have the coverage being with my interesting typing. So, I just go for the Seed Bomb here. They are going to leave this thing in. And that does take care of the Doggo. So, that is amazing because that kind of neutralizes uh, fire switch-ins. And that is perfect. So, down that thing goes. And now it kind of comes down to what they want to do against the skill villain. So, they're actually going to end up going into Incineroar here. Makes a whole lot of sense, of course, because of that Intimidate. Uh, and now I'm looking a little bit less scary, but I still have that plus one. And also, I have one more turn of the sun, which isn't quite going to be able to help me just because of the fact that I know uh, a fake out is coming here. So, while I do, you know, kind of have to lose my attack boost uh, with switching out here, it's definitely in my best interest. And skill villain is going to be looking great for this uh, late game. So I decide to go into Hitmontop here, who is gonna be able to intimidate the Intimidator, and uh, they do go for that fake out. So not gonna do a whole bunch, uh, but it does get rid of the sun. There's never enough sunlight to go around, especially when you're freaking indoors inside the damn cafe. But uh, we were able to kind of take advantage of that and taking care of the dots bun, and we're gonna play for the long game here. So I'm gonna just go ahead and see what this thing wants to do, but they are gonna switch out, and that's totally fine with me because uh, forcing that thing in and out is just gonna rack up Stealth Rock Chip, and that's exactly what we want, especially against that damn Chester Cheeto looking ass. So they decide to go into Corviknight here, and this thing is uh, a bit interesting, especially against the Hitmon top. I don't know what this thing wants to do. If it's more of kind of a utility with like a defog, if it's going to be an iron defense and body press, not exactly sure. But I do want to try to go for a rapid spin here, and uh, I am going to actually just stay asleep, which is mostly fine. They do reveal they're just going to be Brave Bird, and that just straight up knocks me out. And uh, that is a pretty damn hard-hitting Corviknight, and as Hitmontop does go down, this thing does have to take that recoil. And now I've got myself an empty switch. So you already know my best interest is to be able to get that sun up. And the best way that I can do that is with the Grafii. So I bring in Lil Goop. And honestly, this is kind of one of my favorite sunsetters just because, you know, with the Prankster, I'm able to get it up immediately. But also, if people try to pull nonsense on us, we also have Prankster Encore. So I go for the harsh sunlight here. Gonna bring out the sun as they actually end up going for the iron defense. So this is gonna be... Uh, kind of just a body press set, and this thing is a damn issue, especially because my Scovillain is physical. But I can now just go for the Encore, and that is going to just force this thing 
and to stay in and, and making its defenses all crazy. He probably doesn't want to stay in here and do that because I do threaten it with like uh, potentially the Moltres in the back. And uh, Encore is just amazing here. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I can go for a parting shot as it's more than likely that they switch. And then I get myself uh, a bit of momentum and most likely able to bring back in the Scovillain. So they're actually just going to go right into Incineroar once again and the Stealth Rock is absolutely doing its thing here. Digging right in like some Legos in the middle of the night in the hallway. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and parting shot, but then it does not work because of the fact that this thing is dark type. And uh, that is one of the most annoying things about Prankster not being able to affect dark types. But again, it's mostly fine just because I can save that for later if I wanna try to, or if I need to get the sun up and I can just directly switch into my Moltres here who does take a shit ton from the Stealth Rock, but uh, I should be able to take an attack here, especially as it's just going to be the fake out. And then I can outspeed and force this thing out, who he is going to come in and die to the Stealth Rock. So I just decide I'm going to go for the Flamethrower in that sun, nice and boosted out here. They don't have the Dot Spun to switch into. And Moltres is actually in a fantastic position here, mostly just because uh, Gastrodon's got a little bit of chip on it. And in the sun, it's feeling like a Flamethrower is actually a potential two-hit KO. So Gastrodon is their best switch in here. And it takes it, you know, pretty nicely. And being Choice Scarf, I am locked into the Flamethrower. And then I'm figuring, you know what does actually kill here? Is if I commit the Fire Terra, go ahead and boost that damage just enough to be able to try to pick this thing off. So I go ahead and put the candles on my Hot Wings head out here. Call that bitch extra spicy. And while this isn't usually the designated Terra for this team, sometimes you find yourself in a spot where uh, it's going to work out. Because the Flamethrower now has just enough damage to knock out the Gastrodon actually end up getting the critical hit, which in, in hindsight probably does matter, but regardless, go ahead and burn the hell out of the S cargo and nobody's gonna be eating that today. So that is perfect, Gastrodon is down, and now they decide to get the switch into Backscalibur, and Backscalibur's always scary. This thing is a massive threat, and I don't have the ability to really switch out here because I just die to Stealth Rock. So I'm like, you know what? Another little sun-boosted flamethrower actually kills here, and uh, they don't go for the Ice Shard. I would actually probably live it anyway. But now we just go ahead and toast the Backscalibur, which is fantastic. So, they're now down to three Pokemon left. And uh, the main problem is freaking Amoongus' ass over here because they do still have the Terra in the back pocket. Obviously, I have no reason not to click the Flamethrower. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to do. They are going to commit the Terra uh, on the Amoongus here, which is annoying because it's going to go ahead and go right for that Poison Typing, which uh, is going to make it neutral to the fire. And again, Scovillain in the back is my win condition here. So I need to ensure that I have the damage there. At least the Flamethrower is going to do almost enough to knock this thing out. Not quite going to do it, but now I leave myself vulnerable to that Spore. So... That is quite annoying, as this thing lives, it always lives. Now it has the ability to switch out, getting rid of Generator paired with like Leftovers. This thing is uh, actually Black Sludge. It's just it's such a hard Pokemon to kill. But uh, I have basically at this point a Skill Villain who is kind of my last offensive option here. And I need to, you know, enable this thing to do its job. So of course, I'm going to go right back into the Grafaii. I figure, you know, I'm especially defensive. I can take, I resist both of this thing's stabs uh, as they are going to go for that sludge bomb. It is Terra boosted, which is not going to still do anything to me, obviously. But uh, the main problem here is that this thing just has way too much health and I don't really have a good, reliable way of uh, attacking this thing here. So I'm actually just going to go for the Encore to ensure that this thing is kind of just locked up in what it can do. But they're just going to switch right into Incineroar, who is a good check to the Grafaii, of course, as I'm just a prankster asshole. But of course, it is going to die to that Stealth Rock, which is fantastic. Did I even touch that Incineroar today? I think Stealth Rock just straight up clutched it up for us on that. I'm going to go ahead and Encore the Air, and uh, it is going to fail. So as they go ahead and sack off the Incineroar, that's going to allow them the free switch back into Amoongus, who's looking now way healthier because of that damn regenerator. And uh, being at half health, I need to kind of ensure this thing does not stay healthy. Such an annoying mon, but that's exactly what they're going to try to do, is bringing it in and then switching it back out is going to just enable that regenerator once again, and it's just going to be even healthier. So going into Corviknight... Uh, is fine here. I'm just going to set up my sunny day and with that heat rock he's going to stick around for the eight turns with their final two Pokemon left. I'm feeling like that sun should be enough to do it for me and at this point what I'm going to do is go for the parting shot. Now while of course this thing does have mirror armor it's actually just going to drop my attack and special attack but that's fine because I'm just going to switch out anyway as a uh, little goops like that. I'm, I'm out of here. Anyway see ya and now 
I can't really hard switch into the skill villain because of course that threat of the Brave Bird. So I cannot let the Bell Peppers die. But what I decided to do is actually just sack off the Moltres here who in fact does not die to this Stealth Rock surprisingly um, because of the losing my flying type there. But the Brave Bird does finish me off. I do not get the Flame Body which is important to note. I feel like Flame Body never activates for me whenever it would be beneficial, which um, it doesn't really matter in this situation because at this thing's health, Scoville is looking like a nice little sun boost is exactly what we need to try to seal the game up here. So I bring in the boy in the jeans, I guess the, the dudes in the jeans, and we are out here in the exact situation in the late game that I'm planning for. So I can just go for uh, the temper flare here, and they're going to go ahead and switch that thing out. So Amoongus, while it is going to be able to come in here at freaking nearly full health because this thing is just regenerating up a storm over here, uh, it is going to uh, take a lot from a temper flare. And it's actually looking like it's a nice little two-hit KO also, and uh, it feels it feels amazing. So while this thing definitely dies to another temper flare, it's also I had the t stomping tantrum uh, as the coverage for the poison type, but uh, I mean a, a sun boost but the temper is just gonna do enough. So now they're just gonna go ahead and try to regenerate that thing literally to the friggin' moon as Corviknight comes back in and uh, we've got him locked up with the bell peppers, baby. I can go for the temper flare here, takes care of the Corviknight, and now the final Pokemon is gonna be that Amoongus. But we've seen exactly how much we can do with the temper flare and I don't know how much you're planning on regenerating out here, damn it, but Hopefully, we're going to be in a spot where we can finish it off because teams like this that are built so defensively are just annoying to me. I don't know if it's just Amoongus is annoying to me in general, but it is. Anyway, this thing comes in, it's at half health, and you are going to have to face the wrath one more time of the Temper Flare boosted in the sun. It's going to be enough to take care of the Amoongus, and Skull Villain is able to clutch it out for us, which was... Amazing because I didn't really have anything else in the back that could make that happen, but Scovillain is, uh, I feel like, better than people make it out to be, and uh, that's going to be the end of the game. So let me know if you guys enjoyed the video. As always, make sure to leave a like. It really does help out the channel, and uh, I do appreciate all the support, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.